Are you ready to be blinded by the light? What is up, everybody? I'm Ross Sassna from Spiritual Phoenix Studios. Uh, hopefully that intro <laughs> wasn't too abrasive with my horrible singing. Uh, it is December 13th, and we are doing the uh, See the Light of Truth spread. So before the change of calendar, today's Feast of St. Lucy was held on the winter solstice. In the Germanic world, this night is known for its surge in spirit activity. St. Lucy made a vow of chastity. Her father arranged a marriage for her anyway. Lucy decided if she removed her eyes, her groom would flee. God was so impressed, he gave her back her eyes and healed her vision. Thankfully, right? This is why Lucy is the patron saint of blindness. Um, the summation of this spread is, this spread is inspired by the concept of blindness, looks at how a person may find light amidst perceived darkness. Um, that's a really beautiful spread, a horrifying story, by the way. Uh, but a beautiful <laughs> concept for a Fred uh, spread. <laughs> and there's a couple cool little tidbits on the sidebar. Let me read it. The uh, church admits St. Lucy's backstory is built on legend and folklore. So they're not saying she really gouged her eyes out and God healed her. Um, and one other fun little tidbit is uh, the sun depicts a solar influence that sheds light of truth on any situation. And when the sun card appears in a reading, it offers enlightenment and truth for the surrounding cards. So like... One of the ways I think of it is the sun card like literally illuminates the whole reading. Uh, I'm going to quit rambling though and actually get into the spread. So the spread is like a ca uh, a shaft of sunlight. I'll take a picture of it and put it on the intro of the uh, reading or whatever. And we'll get into it. So are you where you want to be? Sun of Swords comes up. So this is Knight of Swords in traditional tarot. Knights are about movement. Swords are about the mind. This is actually about being opinionated and hasty. Uh, you're actually where you want to be, <laughs> but the problem is you're so ready to get to the next horizon, like you're not savoring your current victory. You have to stop for a moment and pause and give yourself credit for all the progress that you've made um, despite the challenges of this year. And for any of us who are still maintaining a positive attitude throughout all of this and aren't um, disheveled by people's behavior or by politics who are like able to get up and still smile, I'd say that that's progress in and of itself because your bullshit meter has like exponentially increased where you can handle a lot more. Um, and then going forward as things smooth out again, you're gonna be way better positioned to deal with life because of that. So yeah, slow down and savor the moment a little bit, which might be hard to say given everything, but there's a lot of beauty in this moment if you're able to look at it. Um, what, next one, what are your options? The devil card actually comes up. The devil card is saying you don't really have many options right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me try to pick the card up. For whatever reason, it's a pain in the ass to pick stuff off this table. Um, devil card is really about bondage or addiction. Uh, one of the ways that my homie Stephanie Capone explained it to me too is like buffering, like waiting time, killing time. Um, and with the resurgence of everything, a lot of us are killing time. So what are your options? Not many. Hang tight. That's why, especially why the concept of uh, are you where you want to be? Yeah, understand that right now this is where you're at and you can invest this time Rather than thinking of where you should be, you can invest this time like building where you are more so, if that makes sense. Sometimes we get so caught up in chasing the horizon that we forget to embrace all of the great opportunities we have within the present moment. So with that said, we'll move forward. Um, what are you willing to change? Father of Pentacles in reverse comes up. This is King of Pentel Pentacles in traditional tarot Pentacles. I don't know why I said that. Uh, so Kings are about authority. Pentacles are about the material world. This card is about being sophomoric um, or stoic. And I think that it's a misunderstanding of stoicism because stoicism is actually incredibly helpful. But this is saying like, quit being so juvenilely minded about situations, grow up, mature up. Um, King of Pentacles upright is about like having self-discipline and some self-control and having structure to your life, right? Uh, so it's saying, what are you willing to change? You don't, you, you want to have more structure and better utilize your time and, and your material assets, right? That's what that's saying. That's what you want to change. How will you feel if you do nothing? Um, dude, I got to find a better way to get these cards up. Three of wands in reverse. 
So threes are about communication. Um, wands are about the material world. I'm sorry, about manifestation or creation. This is about negligence, careless, or like being delayed or having setbacks. How will you feel if you do nothing? You're going to feel like you neglected your duty. You were careless with how you invested your time and that you're the reason that things have been set back because you hadn't been um, cultivating the right attitude. And look, let's be real. Nobody's saying you got to get up every day <laughs> and be like ready to embrace life, but consciously shifting to a perspective of how to make the most of a situation um, on a more often than not basis will greatly increase the quality of your life, like without a doubt, without <laughs> a doubt. Now, this is where things kind of get funny. What do you fear most? Are you ready? Like, are you ready to hear what you actually fear the most? Are you, are you ready? <laughs> it's the ace of wands. Aces are about potential. Uh, wands are again about creation. This is about inspiration or, or creation. Sometimes, and that may sound counterintuitive, right? But a lot of us have fear of success just as well as fear of failure. If we succeed, there's a lot of different things like expectations get uh, arisen. Also, if we're uh, trying to do something, what if we fail, right? And we focus on so much, what if we fail um, that we don't ever focus on what if we succeed? So like the being inspired and having the potential to actually create something you want scares the shit out of you. Um, and to actually like accomplish some of the things that you want. And you might be like, no, I really want those things. If you did, if you did, <laughs> you would have them. There's a lot of stories that prevent you that you have to navigate through to get there, right? So um, you fear winning. <laughs> what happens if you do not confront the fear? <laughs> High priestess in reverse, right? This couldn't even be better. High priestess in reverse is, is like hypocrisy or like deceit. And the way that I like to think of this is, so when we're born, our intuition is perfectly structured to help us have like a spiritually aligned life. The issue is circumstances within our culture tend to push us to discredit that. Now, when you don't face up to some of the fears that you have, those fears linger in your subconscious and that kind of permeates your different emotions. That emotional clutter, um, will make it more difficult to access your intuition. The more difficult it is to access your intuition, the harder it actually is to get on your path. Because if you're responding from, let me, let me say it this way, intuition and trauma can feel very similar. It's just a matter of knowing which energy it is. And when you begin to decipher that and uncode that, that's how you actually move from this space of kind of being hypocritical and stuck and like just kind of lost to the upright of that, which is um, being tapped in intuitively, like being able to access higher levels of information. But if you're being dishonest with yourself on a regular basis, like if you're not facing your emotions, if you're not saying your truths, if you're being dishonest with yourself, how can you trust your subconscious? Like in being dishonest with ourselves is the common operating system in our culture. So um, if you don't confront the fear, you're contributing to your own like disadvantage. What empowering thoughts must you incorporate? Full card in reverse. Um, honestly, the, the most... How do I want to say this? When you realize that you're going to look like a fool no matter what you do to some people, because a lot of people don't try to chase their full potential because they're afraid of what if they fail. But here's the thing. You fail if you don't try and you still look stupid if you don't attempt it. At least like if you push yourself, you'll feel confident in your own choices. So... The empowering thought that you must incorporate it is, is screw it. Like, I used to think that saying F it wasn't really like a valid spiritual concept, but it really is when you look at it. It just depends on the intent or the energy behind it. Are you saying F it, like, what do I have to lose in a positive way? Or are you saying it from a place of desperation? Because that intent behind that question, how you answer that question, impacts the results that you're going to get. Um, last one, why do you matter most? Or why do you matter? Not most, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> two of wands comes up. And this is saying that uh, impatience, rush, or haste. So twos are about duality or finding balance. Um, wands are about creation. And it's saying, hold on. Like, you're not asking the right question. What matters to you is, is like the better question. What matters to you? What is your why behind why you get up every day? Like, do you have a why even? Because I didn't have a why for like most of my life. 
What is your why? Why are you doing anything that you're doing? Because for, for a long time, for me, it was get up, pay the paycheck, like go get a, a job so I could pay the rent and pay the bills. And that's a really shitty way to live a life. Some people are there because that's just the, all they can afford to do like emotionally right now, right? But when you transition and you actually are able to answer your why, like why do I do what I do now? A, it excites me. B, it's structured around uh, a way of life that's more healthy for me mentally because some, some of the conditions that I have and like how I process reality, like this is better suited for me. And then additionally, my why is I genuinely want to help people with some of the experiences that I've had. That motivates me and gets me out of bed and like pushes me when shit gets rough. So once you have that why, that answers the question of why do you matter? And honestly, here's the thing. If you don't have a why, I'm going to help give you one right now, <laughs> right? This is like a free session of life coaching. Your why is generally connected to your purpose, like to, to your pain points, the things that have hurt you throughout your life. And it's associated with learning how to overcome those things and then sharing the challenges that you faced with other people and how you were able to turn that into an asset or if not able to turn it into an asset, at least not let it affect you so deeply. And when you begin to understand that and find your unique way to express that wisdom that you've captured, your life will change every day will be different and the challenges and the things that used to hold you back will fall away and you will like be able to actually step step into the ace of wands comfortably and not be intimidated by how much potential you actually have right and at this point i'm going to stop like this long rambling reading uh, and just tell you i hope you have a blessed day and it was awesome doing this for you thanks so much